Hi, it's Jenny here again. Uh, this is the third of my video diaries and I left you playing Oh Dear What Can The Matter Be a few days ago, which was pretty awful. So I've been learning a new piece which is called The Blade and Races. Um, again, very much a beginner. Um, I'll give you a little verse of what I've done so far in a little bit. Uh, the thing I've been trying to concentrate on the last few days has been trying to get my bellow action a little bit smoother and I picked up a few tips as you do and one of the things I realised was that perhaps I was um, just trying to do too much and moving them too much instead of trying to keep it smooth and the, the, the secret probably is in the timing of the piece that you're playing and that you have to work it out after a few practices of how much you can go out and how much you come in according to the phrasing of the music and that's where you sort of you, you learn that as you're going along of how much is in a phrase of the musical phrase term here so um, if you'll hear it in Blade and Races there is quite a sort of distinctive pattern to it and it's probably every four bars so you can count going out four bars and coming back in four bars but of course when you're learning it and you're playing it that little bit slower you're going to have to do it every two bars because you're otherwise you're going to run out of bellows so it's getting to know your piece really well and then just knowing what the timing is going to be on it. Um, the other thing I, I thought I ought to mention is that I've come to this assuming that you all know how to use a keyboard. Um, and because I'm a piano player, I kind of know all that sort of stuff instinctively. So for me, the, the right hand is almost an automatic pilot, even though it's the wrong way up. I'm not playing horizontally, I'm playing vertically. But um, for me, it's just that little bit easier. Just strange playing the wrong way up but I need, at least I know what I'm playing on the keyboard but if you've not played a keyboard before it probably is even steeper learning curve for you so I just thought I'd go through some basics of where you are on a keyboard um, um, the scale if you go from the scale of C um, is always there's a pat, quite a distinctive pat on the keyboard of there's two black notes and then there's three black notes and the scale of C which is like the beginning scale where you've got no uh, sharps or flats, the C is always below the two black notes, so you find your two black notes and it's the white note below, and that's your C. So that's a starting point. And the scale of C goes obviously from that C up to the next C along, bottom of that two notes up to there, and that's your whole scale, which is um, that's eight notes. It's an octave, octave, uh, octo, eight. Um, and it goes up alphabetically up to a certain point. So you'll go C, D, E, F, G, and it starts again A, B, C. Um, if you find finding the C a little bit difficult, the other way to do it is to find a D, and the D is between the two black notes, which sits there, that's your D. The C is then obviously going to be below that note. And the D is like between the two black notes, it's like having, uh, my husband says it's the dog in the kennel. So the D for the dog inside his kennel there, which is quite a useful way of remembering it. Um, I'm just going to put this on so I can demonstrate the scale. So the scale of C, which is one octave, goes from C, D, E, F, G, then it starts again at A, A, B, C. So it's of C to G, and then it starts again, A, B, C. C again, just below the two back notes is your C. And all scales, all the major scales, are made up of a distinctive pattern of two tones, a semitone, then three tones, and a semitone. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about, I can clearly show on a keyboard, it's much easier to demonstrate on a keyboard what the difference is. So from there to there, that's a semitone. You can always hear it doesn't sound too great. Hold together. That to there is a semitone. That to there is a semitone. Uh, there's another semitone here. Two white notes together this time. They're semitones. But a tone is actually made up of two semitones. So from there to there being one, and from there to there being the other, it then, then becomes the distance between there and there. That's a tone. So you have to have two semitones, uh, two tones, and a semitone for the beginning. So you go. There's a tone. There to there is a tone. There, then there's a semitone. And then you're going from there to there. Again, two semitones. 
that's a tone. From there to there is a tone. Then a third tone, from there to there is a tone. And you end with a semitone there. So your scale is C. And that's the, the basic uh, scale that everybody would learn when they're first learning to play any kind of keyboard. It's got no black notes in it at all. It's very straightforward, all the white notes. Now, of course, if you're going to start on a different note, so say, for instance, you started on G, if you didn't play a black note in there, it would sound like this. And that sounded odd. And the reason being is because you have to keep up that same pattern of tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. And it should, in fact, be like this. So you have to raise, what's called raising, the note at the end there to keep the pattern and that becomes what's called a sharp because you've gone up. Now the, the, the funny thing about um, music is a black note can be either a sharp or a flat depending on where you've started from. Um, I don't want to burn your brain with it, you might have to learn some theory about how the scales are and the different keys work. Um, so that F sharp could also be a G flat going down and you will see that written in music and you'll know that if you see something like an E with a little B after it, it's actually E, a flat, E flat going down, like a flat tile goes down, so a flat goes down and a sharp goes up. And all scales are built on that same principle. Uh, fingering wise, um, there are some sort of very basic rules of how you go up and down uh, and where you would need to use more fingers. So say in a scale of one octave, you actually need more than five fingers, you actually need eight fingers. So going up a scale, you'll go one, two, three, then you're going to put your thumb, let's try to find it, your thumb will go underneath the third finger to play the last five notes. And then coming down, you go five, four, three, two, one, which is your thumb. And this time you bring the third finger over. So going up, your thumb goes underneath your fingers and coming back, it goes over. And I do recommend going online looking on video tube lessons and just seeing um, some of the basic keyboard skills that you can pick up. There's tons and tons of stuff out there. Okay, the last thing I'm going to just talk about today is the bellows, um, which is probably the biggest mystery for most people who are starting to play the accordion. And probably the hardest thing, I think, personally, to master. Uh, the, rest, the rest seems to sort of come to you, like where the keyboard is and where the bass, bass notes are. There's charts and all sorts of things to help you out. But the actual act of bellowing is very, very physical, it's tiring, you're, you're, it's quite a weight, depending on what size uh, piano accordion you've got. Luckily mine's nice and small, but there are some monsters out there, um, I can't even lift them up. And uh, the act of bellowing itself is, is exertion, but it shouldn't be as hard as you think it is. Now one important thing just to say before you start experimenting with bellows is to remember your air button, if you remember your lever or your button here on the side. Don't ever start trying to pull your accordion in and out without um, using that air button because you will actually damage your bellows. Uh, they're, they're quite delicate inside, so you don't want to be uh, hurting your accordion. So using the, the key, the button here to let your air in and out, you can have a go at this. Now I'm going to, as usual, stand up so you can see things a little bit more clearly. Pressing that in, you, the feel you want to get is always that gravity takes your bellows down and you then use your hand to bring it back in and it should be a nice smooth action for just straightforward playing uh, something in just basic maybe 4-4 four, four time. You could count out how many bars there are in a phrase and you can count that through with your bellows, you can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. By then you're gonna come back in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. By then you'll start to run out of air, you'll need to start going back out again. And you can hear that because of course as you run out of air, 
you also run out of sound because less air is being pumped through the reeds to make the noise of the music, or make the music, I shouldn't say the noise, should I? <laughs> uh, so it depends on how fast you're playing, as I think I said earlier, if you're playing quickly, you'll go through bars quite quickly. But when you're learning, you may only get two bars of music in for an out, and then two bars of music for a coming back. And really it's as straightforward as that. After a while, once you're more comfortable with where your bass notes are, where your keyboard is, your bellows will probably just happen quite naturally. And the more you get to know your piece of music, the more you'll know when to go in and out. Um, I'm going to finish up with my piece, which is Blade and Races, and you will see and learn from my mistakes that I still haven't got this mastered. And the reason being is I'm still finding my way around these bass notes. Blade and Races actually goes to G, to D, to A, back to D. It's going up and down on the bass, and you find it quite hard to get used to. I'm a lot better than I was a few days ago, so that's why I'm daring to show you this. And I wish you every success. I hope we've covered a few more things in this, and as soon as I learn some more, I'll be back again. See you soon. Thank <laughs> you.